Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 360 for Monday, October 10th, 2022. folks and welcome to gig gab the show by for and about working musicians here in durham new hampshire i'm dave hamilton here in napomo california it's paul kent how are we today mr kent you know i think we're pretty good it's been a, a bit of a crazy time i got a couple of crazy weeks ahead of me i've had some really rewarding gigs that's um, good and I actually want to share a reflection of one of these rewarding gigs, right? Yeah, go. I, I think we've talked about this before. So, you know, we have this friend who publishes Daring Fireball, right? Yes, John Gruber. And John Gruber. And Daring Fireball is like a big, you know, kind of commentary blog site for, for the Apple world, right? And yeah. he's a trusted, good. Sing, and one, a one, guy, one man, uh, one man, one author site. Right. Single yeah. author site is the right way to say it. Yeah. He's, he's, he's very successful. He's very trusted. He's very, you know, yeah. revered, you know, in, in that world. And I remember one time he said that he started that business because he realized he was not a good employee. He literally could not look at other people doing things that he knew he could do better and live with it. Right. It just literally once that he had that epiphany that he wasn't a good, I guess, follower. Yeah. That, that he had to run his own ship. I I so, you know, I get that. I I I, I did yeah. not. I've never heard him say that. Which is, I mean, it doesn't that doesn't mean it's not true. It just means I haven't heard him say it. But it doesn't surprise me about him. And it, it you know, I've I've the phrase we use on Business Brain, the show I do with Shannon, uh, is we consider ourselves patently unemployable. It doesn't mean that people wouldn't want to have us work for them. It means that we don't want to work for other people or that we no. we don't operate well working for other people. Yeah. Exactly. And maybe if, if they knew, if they knew, they wouldn't want you working for them anyway. Well, right? I mean, there's, there's, <laughs> when usually when you tell somebody I'm patently unemployable, that, that usually ends the conversation of, are you sure you don't want to work for me? And it's like, I think I just told you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I do. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. So I, I was saying, John's been on my mind uh, mm. and that, that line has been on my mind and I've been thinking about the di different music endeavors I have. So I have the House Rockers 23 years now, and the House Rockers have brought me, you know, so much satisfaction and opened up so many opportunities. But the House Rockers, for many reasons, aren't exercising compromise. And well, any collaboration and, is. I, I, well, but, I but hate no. the term I mean, compromise. Collaboration is the word. Yeah. Well, well it, it, this, this is actually my point, Dave. So. The trios or the small groups that I have that back my acoustic stuff that are that are called basically the Paul Kent band. So I have one down here in the new place where I live. Yep. And pretty much a similar song list, you know, 75, 80% similar for what I play when I do acoustic gigs that I want a band backing me up there. But they are all mind decisions and all, you know, and and the the premise of the people who are playing with me. There is no compromise there. I mean, literally, like I say, here are the songs, learn them, show up, ready to play. And they go, okay, thanks, see you there. And, and then they come and play them. Got and it. that is a different type of, well, there's just, there is no compromise. I mean, it, it, it literally is. And, it, and, it, and to some degree, that scat scratches my itch um, for wanting to, to I want to, I want to lead a team entirely and prove myself right all the time. Okay. I want to. <laughs> I, mean, I want to pick the songs. Yeah. I want to put, pick the set list. I want to, you know, I, freaking a. I, I would want to pick the clothes. I would want to, you know, pick the lighting. I would, you know, if I could go all the way down that. But the exercise in the house rockers, which you know is a lot of full time pro musicians. Um, I was, I was probably the least experienced of those musicians when I started the house rockers. Um, so you know, there's the whole thing of you know. Well, it's the whole thing about knowing how to be a leader. Like, again, the house records could have started out saying, this is the deal. If you want it, great. If you don't want it, great. Sure. You know, we're going to keep moving. But but uh, once you let that horse out of the barn, and it is a collaboration. Well, I've see, I, 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 get, I, I completely understand what you mean by compromise. Um, 
I think there's a distinction between with what we're with the conversation we're having here. I think there's a distinction between compromise and collaboration in that we're talking about compromise as a negative thing in some ways, right? It's lesser That's than exactly what I'm saying. I, I know, I'm but, but I, but what I'm saying is like a collaboration can be the same thing, but with, with positive results because it's more okay, than, look, but so I just want to, I just, I want to, I want to even the premise that I started with, not given the premise that I'm, I'm a crappy employee, well, right? Yeah, but, I, I'm a crappy collaborator unless I enter the relationship saying it, 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 this is like, like yeah. whenever I think about songwriting, I, the concept of let's sit down together. What do you think of this line? What do you think of this chord? What do you think of this progression? You know, and, and two people willingly saying, this is a process we're going to undertake together. The house rockers were a process where I came to forks in the road of, of decision-making. Do I keep someone? Do I keep the whole enterprise moving forward? Or do I have to stop for a while? While I go out and look for someone to replace something. Sure. Do I, do I admit that someone has a better idea than I have here or, or it will manifest better. And, you know, so there are a whole bunch of those types of decisions on the journey. And so would I rather in my mind, is there a, a 10 piece rock with horns show that I think could be wildly successful? Well, I thought there was in 1999 when I started it. <laughs> and, you know, like I said, I learned a lot. There's some stuff, sure. some stuff works, some stuff works better. You know, some people sing certain things better. I mean, there's, there's, a, there were a lot of lessons that I learned there, but I am, I am always conscious that I, and I own the responsibility. I made the decision to uh, let the rope out and give and give input opportunities to others. And sometimes I ugh, have to bite, you know, bite my tongue. That is not, but I agreed to allow this process. So I live in this with, with the house records. And again, oddly, I have to remind myself or I do remind myself it works. Is it exactly the path that I wanted? No. Is the result possibly greater than it could have been if I drove it myself? I have to check myself and ask that question a lot. My tendency is to say, no, I'm the smartest guy in the room, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if, no. if we would have just followed my plan, we'd be so much better off. But I have to say, you know what? This is a pretty great band. People love it. You know, it, it's achieved quite a few things. You know, let's not look at gift hearts in the mouth. This thing works. And, you know, and that, that's a part of leadership as well, right? There's a part of leadership, which is driving your vision. And then there's a part of leadership, which is, reading the tea leaves at every turn and, you know, figuring out what resources, what input, what advice, what, you know, what help you need to get to the next place. Both of those are, are, are reasonable tacks to explore. Yeah, for sure. No, I'm, I'm, I am reminded of something that John Gruber said, uh, one of the first times he spoke publicly and he was nervous AF, right? Like he had, he was, he, like, he's got his chops now, but you know, he was, this was his first time. I think it was at Macworld Expo. And, uh, he said something along the lines of, I, I take input. I, I, I look at things, but when I'm right, I know I'm right. And and it's an interesting thing. And and of course, you know, as we said earlier, he runs a single author blog. It's a single, I mean, I don't, he may have family members working for him. I don't know what his payroll looks like and all that stuff. But as far as the public's concerned, it's him. That's it. And, um, and what you're saying here is like, that, that's impossible to do when in a musical scenario, when you want to have more than one instrument playing at the same time, right? Like it's not impossible to do that actually is my point. This is the, this is the okay. most important thing. It's not impossible to do whatever you have set the terms of engagement to be. Like I said, I have sure. more than one instrument on these other things and the terms of engagement of I'll do all the work. I'll book the gigs. I'll pay you. I'll promote I'll do all, I'll, you know, but, but I'm going to sing all the songs and I'm going to play all, and I'm going to pick all the songs and I'm going to, you know, arrange all the songs. Are you in? Yes. Good. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. But once it's like, uh, and, and it takes a certain type of leader to actually just stay on that hill and, you know, <laughs> defeat all comers who are like, yeah, yeah, I know. I, I know I agreed to that, but if you would just give me a little bit of rope here, yeah, it yeah. Would be, everybody would be so much better off. What you do in those moments is a leadership 
uh, tact that matters, right? I chose at, at my point in time. Now, again, if I was a well-established guy, could I restart a band now and, and do exactly what I may, maybe have better reputation, you know, have certainly a lot more knowledge, better chops. You know, I know a lot more people who have indicated they want to play. Maybe, you know, I could do it right now. But what I'm saying is I live in a world where uh, the art of compromise can be frustrating to me. Yep. And I constantly have to ask, is this for the greater good or my, just my own good? And that's just one experience of leading a band. Is this for the greater good? Will this move the whole enterprise forward? So I have... Or, I, oh, go ahead. Sorry, finish your thought. I, I, sorry. Yeah, well, that's it. it will, will it move the whole enterprise forward? Will the band, you know, get a good gig, get a better gig, you know, whatever that, whatever good is? Or am I literally feeding because I need to prove myself right so much? Yep. Um, and you know, that's, that's what you check yourself about. And, yeah. you know, some, someone might say, screw it. I do all the work. I'm going to fulfill my ego. That's the deal I've made with all of you band members. <laughs> this is the deal. We're still on, well, you're still on board with that. Good. Don't ask the question then let's go. That is a scenario that certain groups operate under. And Perhaps. You just have to yeah, pro people, probably. Wait, wait yeah. you agreed to this already. We're, we've already covered this, right? You, you know, this, uh, the rules of engagement have been predetermined. Everybody's cool with it. You're, you're changing, not me. I have to, con I have to politely, respectfully remind you that's not what's going on here. So I, I have, I, I, I I'm, I'm similar in, in, in this way that I'm, I, I, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but I'll say I'm interpreting the words you're saying that remind me that I can be a control freak. I don't want to say you're a control freak. That's up to you to say or not say. <laughs> uh, but but this reminds me of the part of me that is a control freak. And and perhaps the best way it, because um I want to I want to find the distinction for the purposes of this conversation between the idea of compromise and the idea of collaboration because really they could be defined the same way but I want to define them differently and I think I've found perhaps a, a mindset shift that that uh, that I've applied in these scenarios and you and you helped crystallize it for me here. You you use the phrase, you know, I, I'm in a situation where I have to admit someone has a better idea than me. Let's call that the sort of definition of compromise. Right. Or I have to admit that for me, the flip side of that, the definition of collaboration would be I hope someone has a better idea than me. And. And, and, and I, ha I, I've, I mean, I, I, I find myself in these scenarios often and I am a control freak. And so I have that uh, not all the time, but you know, it's in my nature to feel like, okay, crap, I have to admit someone has a better idea than me, but oftentimes they do have a better idea than me. And it's really difficult as we all know to look at things objectively. And so I go into these things and right now we're, um, you know, we're working on these, recording these new fling songs and we are in the mastering phase of one of them, this tune, Synesthetic Girl, uh, which is coming out really great. I'm really stoked about it. And then, um, what's the next one that we're doing? I can't remember the name of it because we just started working on it. Uh, this song called Her Stormy Days, which is a song we don't really know all that well. And we're sort of crafting the arrangement as we're recording it. And we're putting down drums first. And so I put down, I spent this weekend, some time this weekend, you know, just sort of coming up with ideas that fit the songwriter. Aaron was the chief songwriter on this one. So trying to fit his vibe, uh, but also like not really knowing what works. But the problem is you go and do, I did 17 takes of this song this weekend as I was, you know, working things out. And then I sliced and diced them here to try to come up with like, okay, here's a part that that's starting to come together. Like this is this is cool. And then immediately, you know, Russ starts looking at it, and I, and I asked him, it's a song that's a slower tempo, and a really so, slow tempo songs are really hard to play, and the, especially this one because it's got this 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 loping feel to it that desperately makes you want to rush the one. And, and so it's, it's, I said to him, I said, look, I need you to be really, really picky when you listen to my part on this and make sure 
that you find anything where the drums are like rushing the one coming in, especially out of fills or transitions or things like that. Uh, because if we don't have a solid drum part that everybody else tracks to, it's never going to feel right. It's always just like we're, we're you know, we're going to be trying to fix things that that aren't fixable. I said, so let's let's be especially anal about this. He's like, great. Yep. OK, no problem. And so we're both being anal about it. And in the process of it, he's like, yeah, there's this one section of the tune that kind of coming out of each, each chorus. He's like, I don't know. He's like, I don't, it's not out of time, but it's just lacking confidence. And I'm like, yeah, I, I know exactly what he's talking about. And he's like, I think maybe we should just cut the drums out there. And at first it was like, you know, my thought, like my gut reaction thought was no. And, but I didn't say anything about it. It was just like, that's what came from inside me. And it's like, no, 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 wait, I, I, I hope that. That's better than whatever idea I came up with while I was messing with this. Like, it's two heads are better than one, you know. And and I think he's probably right uh, about this. I haven't actually haven't listened to it yet. I only saw the note in our our Trello board that we use to kind of track all this stuff as we're doing the tracks. But um, but he's probably right, or or something will evolve from that. And it, but it's mm-hmm. that that thing of embracing each idea, and it, at the very least, trying it. And being open to trying everything and, and, and sort of seeing it through to its logical conclusion so that you know whether that idea is the better one or not, right? And it, it usually if you're working with people that are equally eager to have the best end result, generally speaking, you can, you can sort of begin to apply so much trust that you get away from that I. I, you know, one, one person has to admit that the idea is better. You're sort of seeking the better idea and it almost doesn't matter, you know, and if you need, like if, if in a scenario like this, I needed to give myself credit and or, or folks out there, if you're listening and you need to do that, you know, I could tell myself, well, he never would have come up with that idea if I didn't do this other thing first. If I didn't play with less confidence in this part, he never would have thought to, you know, so you could take credit for for catalyzing the idea if you really need to. I, I, you know, that's not, yeah. that, it's not it, for this particular one. That's not what's going through my head. But I've certainly played that, you know, brain hack with myself before just so that I'm I'm really giving these things a shot. Because I, I at the same time as being the, the one who played that particular drum part, I want to play whatever the part is well. But I don't have to be the one that comes up with every drum part that I play that like in most bands, that's like everybody's parts are sort of an amalgamation of ideas that everybody else has. I one of my favorite songs from the bitter pill record that we just put out. uh, The the record is living ain't cheap, dying ain't free, but the tongue is this, the tongue, the song is come set on the porch a spell. And it goes into this like halftime, double time thing in the middle of the tune and if, I think I, I can't remember if I told the story here on the show or not, but a friend of mine said to me, oh, I really love what you did there. And it's like, oh, yeah, that wasn't my idea. I mean, I played it, you know, I, so if you like the way I played it, great. If you like the way I executed it, amazing. Thank you. But, you know, all credit for that idea goes to John, our guitar player, because he was like, what if you do this? And I was like, oh, wait, 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 I, that idea might be better than mine. And so sure enough, you know, um, I actually think control freaks do not have a problem with better ideas because control freaks want to be right more than want to be anything else. I don't think they need to have ownership of everything. I think the problem is not as good ideas that reinforce your, your, the initial position you're coming from yeah. that, you know, it's going to have to be me. I'm not, you know, I'm the, I'm the only one who really has the vision for this here. And so, you know, you get these, yeah, well, when other, don't, yep. don't pass your bar. You're like, yep, I knew it. Nobody else knows as good as me. <laughs> That's right? true. I actually don't sure. think, I don't yeah. think it's a problem. Like if someone gives you a, like an idea and a light bulb goes on for you. Yeah. I think you have enough. I have enough self-awareness. I think you have enough self awareness like, damn, I'm pretty good. This guy just gave me something even better. I'll take that. If it, if, you know, if it, if it raises the bar for me, yeah. I, you know, I better pay attention to it. So <laughs> it makes us all look good. That's like, right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Which is ultimately what the control freak wants. I well, think. I don't know. I, I mean, it, it's what I want and it's what I really work hard to allow to happen without. And when I say allow to happen, I mean, keep myself from getting in the way of it happening. <laughs> to be very clear, very self-aware uh, or as self-aware as I, I can possibly be in this moment. But um, I, I've encountered 
less confident control freaks who just need it to be their idea regardless and and aren't mm. even aren't even entertaining the the suggestions that are coming in that might be actually going into into borderline narcissism that might be well, a different malady that's that's fair that's fair that's fair yeah 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 <laughs> i don't know are we uh we we gig yeah, armchair psychologists who happen to be musicians so there you go <sighs> i don't know man but yeah I'm, I'm enjoying these tunes and i'm enjoying pulling them together so at least there's that all right yeah and i'm eager to now russ just before we started doing the show i got a a Trello card or a note on our Trello card from Russ for that tune. He's like, Oh yeah, I put together a, like I, you know, I hacked and slashed and, and I came up with an idea. Listen to it. Let me know what you think. So I'm, I'm curious to see really, I'm curious to see if he's hacked and slashed it well enough that that's just the tune. I don't even need to re retrack anything. So there's always, there's always the, the benefit of laziness that can, can rent, can win the day. <laughs> Somebody else comes up with a better idea and executes it. Yeah. There's something to be said there. I don't know. Yep. What the heck are we talking about? Mark had a comment for our last show. And then after we'll talk about Mark here. And then I want to talk about contact methods today. And, mm. and, and I, I, I mean this in sort of an umbrella way. How, to com how do you communicate within your band? How do you, how do you communicate with, uh, you know, like booking agents and the people you need to work with at clubs and all that? I, I have lots of thoughts on this. And it was actually something we had set for last week and then. I've had some experiences this week that have sort of evolved it. But first, Mark uh, sends in a comment from last week's show. He says, I was listening and thinking about my trio. I have a three-piece band con consisting of drums, bass, and keys slash piano. Two of us share the bulk of the leads and harmonies for every song. This is a second reincarnation of this trio. I don't know if that means it's the third incarnation if it's a second re okay i'm not gonna get hung up on that uh the new keyboard player is fantastic at nailing sounds and making the parts sound rich and full great this has opened up a lot of potential avenues for us musically to play songs that other bands in our area won't and some songs that are on our personal always wanted to perform lists and just some songs that fit the arrangement of a trio without a guitar player cool and listening to your last show about mid-tempo songs and stuff that was hard, stuff that has hard grooves to nail live, that's the bulk of the type of the music we're covering and performing with this trio. We try to mix in dance stuff as much as possible as we do play weddings and other bar events where the crowd expects to move. But we have a list of stuff where the audience doesn't really know what to do with it dancing-wise, and they usually end up sitting and listening. They enjoy it as we try to perform it well, and they typically don't get to hear a band perform these songs live in our area, but it's not dance floor filling material. The real situation slash question is, I'm not sure if this is a positive or negative for us as a band. We all thoroughly enjoy the type of music we play, but our area is very heavy into the dance party music cover bands vibe that play the same stuff everyone else plays and gets the crowd going and drinking. So we haven't found our niche yet. I love playing Escape, the Pina Colada song, and Sledgehammer, and the crowds enjoy it, but it's not leading us up to the next level of bookings we'd like to hopefully see. I'm not sure what the next step should be for us. Keep doing what we're doing and try to find our niche, or go back to the formula that works for our area and play the same songs everyone else does just to keep the dance floor hopping. I have it's thoughts on It's yeah. the universal problem, right? Yeah, man. Yeah. What do you th what I do you mean, what do you think here? I, I I have lots of thoughts. Well, I, I think yeah. the thing is that, that you start with uh, there's there's always a the bar scene or the dance music scene is just I've come to believe it's just it's it's just the most obvious. It sometimes seems like the only scene that there is, but it is just the most obvious connection for a live musician. Right. Sure. It is, you know, you're used to seeing bands and bars and, you know, that's everything. You're used to seeing bands and at weddings. Right. And this is that interesting conversation about where art and commerce meet. Right. If you want to sell musical services to people who expect to dance, you really kind of give, got to give them what they want. There is a lar way larger universe than the general business book. There, there actually are way more songs if you want to find your creative itch to scratch which would be one approach to it but if you like the format if this is where the art moves your soul as a three piece of that configuration playing music that the three of you feel 
something magical happens when the three of you do it. The question is, the question is, you know, are there art galleries, wineries, restaurants, coffee shops? Are there, are there other types of venues besides the obvious ones where they, where they do want dance music? Well, it's it's like what we were talking about last week the 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 listening room venues, right? Like uh, that's to 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 put a to put a term on it, yeah. Or or the background music venues, right? Like a, oh. a like a like a, like a, a, a an art gallery opening. It's not listening; they're not paying attention to you. You're adding to the ambience of it, and they actually want music that blends in and adds to the ambience. And sure, those things happen. Sure, I mean classical guitarists, harpists, you know, make a living doing this, right? Uh, jazz, a lot of jazz uh, you know, musicians make a living doing this. So I think the thing is, is, is you get to decide what do you want to be? And, you know, do you really think you can make a go? You know, you know that a bar wants dance music and drinking music. You just know that. Right. If you have something new to, uh, that would be the greatest thing. If someone says, you know what? We're not a dance band. I defy you to call me a dance man, but I went in and, but we're damn entertaining. And I went into a bar that's usually a dance bar and sold them. And we're working out just great there. They don't dance. They just stand around, listen to us and they laugh, you know, their butts off or they smile or they nod their heads or they sing along, but we're, we're not a dance band. We play American pie for three hours and it works somehow. If that works. You know, sure. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so I guess the thing is, there are venues that are dance venues, and if you want to play those, you got to kind of either call a spade a spade and, and have repertoire and do that. And, and again, you know, remember, you don't have to be just one thing. If you want to be a working musician, you are able to fit into many um, situations with your instrument, voice instrument. Sure. Um, so, you know, that, that is another approach. You can have a dance set and then, you know, but if what really stirs your soul is playing Genesis music. You're going to have a hard time in most bars playing Genesis music, but there is a place. There is a place. There may be less places. You may have to be creative and help create places, but if you're really good at playing Genesis music and you create a vibe and you can go someplace where they're, you know, doing a planetarium presentation on the wall or on the ceiling and people are going to lay down and look at the stars while you're playing Genesis music and it's an awesome experience, go find those places is kind of the discussion I would have with anybody stop trying to will non dance music into dance venues. Oh, that that's for sure. Like, it, yeah, because him asking, you know, is this a positive or negative for us as a band? Um, it, it, uh, that's one he, he's asking is his song list a positive or negative for us. And I don't think it's either. I, I think it's right. I, right. I think it's pick the songs that you play well and that you feel comfortable marketing in the right places and then go market them there, right? You, you know, if, I mean, Bitter Pill does, does fantastically well in the rooms that we play. But if we were, if we build ourselves to go play, you know, one of these disco halls uh, where they have 500 people come in looking to dance all night, it's going to be a terrible fit. Like, right, like you, it's it's good. hold on right there before you joined Bitter Pill. Yeah, your perspective of cover bands was a lot of those types of bars, right? Where mm -hmm. you know, dancing, swing, and drinking you yeah. know, was the common denominator. So, did you know much about about the whole world of alternate alternate approaches to venues besides before you joined a band that by definition had to go find those venues and you know or create those venues? Did you know much about that in your area? Yeah, I mean that 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 vibe exists very strongly here. I wasn't really playing in it. I mean, we did some fling gigs in that vibe, but for the most part, we were playing the you know the the whatever the VFW halls and the the bars that wanted to people to drink and move, you know, and that and and so and then I was playing in in Uptown Celebration and Groove Syndicate, which were you know really tailor made for those scenarios, and so. Yeah, that that's what I was playing, but I was aware that these other things existed for sure, and I and I always liked it because it's yeah. it's a wonderful vibe to go and play in a listening room. Like, like what he describes, what Mark describes, is sort of what we last week put up on a pedestal as the holy grail. Like, just don't try to do that in a in a room where everyone is expecting dance music. If as long as you manage the expectations coming in. 
and attract people with and deliver to people something that approximates what you told them they would hear, then you're fine. I mean, similarly, though, like if we went into flight coffee or whatever, you know, one of these listening rooms that we play and and just, you know, t- started playing September and, <laughs> you know, uh, Sweet Home Alabama and all that stuff, it, it, it would be a little weird. It'd be like, OK, what's happening here? This is. Yeah. You want us to get out of our seats? Like we didn't really show up to get out of our seats here tonight. We're we're happy kind of in them, you know, and it'd just be a little weird. So not everything fits everywhere, and that's okay. Just find the rooms where your band and your style of music that you're doing well. I mean, obviously you he's found the band. I don't know if it's him, but you know, we'll say the band has found some level of success where people are happy to sit and watch. So Go find those places and just play there more and play the dance places left less. Yeah. 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 And if you're, if you're great at Genesis music, I don't, I don't know what it's like around, around you, but here tribute bands are, are the ones are the cover bands that are making money. Uh, Mm. Big time. You, You know, I've got several friends that are playing in what I consider really high profile tribute bands around here and they're making bank, you know, they're, yeah. They're they're playing rooms that hold five six hundred people, selling fifty dollar tickets, and selling these places out regularly. So you know you could do the math if you're good at that. Well, don't you know? I wouldn't certainly take the planetarium gig if it plays if it pays well. But I would also look at you know putting on your Genesis show. Now you're gonna have to have lights and and you know some level of you know like like Mr. Paul oh, Kent says. Live music is a visual art, so make sure that people are are getting what they expect. Now, Genesis wasn't really a, a band where the people on stage did a lot. Phil Collins, you know, when if you're playing that era of Genesis, which I'm, I'm guessing maybe you would. I don't know. We're talking about a fictitious Genesis tribute band. It can be anything we want. Uh, so you got to have somebody with a little bit of personality like Phil, but otherwise, you know, lights and... And maybe a, a video board that does cool things so that people can, you know, be high and enjoy Genesis music. Like <laughs> I assume that would work out really well. So I don't know. It, it, I think that that is actually the, the challenge for musicians today is finding the right combination of things to give people an experience. If you're a dance band, it's a little easier because there are dance venues. If yeah. you are, if you are a band that your music is going to move people and give them something of value but you have to have it in the right organization. Do you remember I took you to that um, concert series in Los Gatos that, that I ended yeah. up producing? Yeah, we saw, we okay, saw Pop so Fiction that night, I think. We saw yeah. Pop Fiction, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, the concert, the Civic Concert Series around here, they've grown tremendously. I mean, it is not uncommon to have three to 5,000 people come into these things. Now, right. Right? They're, right. They, they've really grown to fill parks. The pendulum swung where... where Years ago, many of them were civic cultural events. They would have a mariachi band or a you know a a, a, a Brazilian salsa, right? They would have they would have um, uh, interesting cultural events through music as an as a, and that's a large way of how the, these things got funded is that they were they were cultural expressions for the communities that they served, um, and they did good and and some of them did really well. But, you know, then the pendulum kind of swung. And when they turned into these outdoor parties and a lot of drinking and, you know, they turned into these big street fe- festival they fair found, things. They found the lowest they, common denominator is what well, you just described. I mean, they yeah. blew up and, you know, our, I, and and it's uh, I actually wonder if the, they've gotten so big now and now they get so big and they get a couple drinking problems. And they get it. Well, the pendulum swing the other way. Mm. And if the pendulum swings the other way. Like the one in. in the town that I was in in Los Gatos swung a little bit the other way. It was it was all dance bands, just dance bands for for well, certainly when me and Scott were producing. And so for, for for a period of three, four, five years, it was a it was a Sunday afternoon party in the park. Whereas right. previous to that, the people who produced it had had to focus on cultural approach to it. And, you know, there was an opera singer one week, and it was literally come to the park, and there will be some cultural music to enrich your life. Now these things have gotten out of hand, and this year <laughs> it actually swung back a little bit. There was like Coffus Brothers played, so you know original music, not yep. not cover band music, um, and other types of you know there were a couple of dance cover bands, right? But 
I actually wonder if as these things have gotten bigger and they now have big event uh, policing problems, policing meaning making sure everybody's safe and, yeah. and healthy, Yeah. whether, you know, we sure like it as a town being able to say how, what a big success it is, but we really got to be a little bit safer. Maybe we should, you know, scale it back and get more to a diversity of music and get back to enriching people in a different way, not not just their, you know, their yearn to dance, right? Yeah. And party. So, you know, I, I think the message is musicians who do not play dance music have got a holy struggle, a noble struggle to find places that are a, a suitable experience for people to enjoy your music. And like I said, art gallery openings, restaurants, coffee shops, listening rooms, whatever that might be, finding a warehouse and producing your own event. And if you're good and you're entertaining and you do something that makes the legend of you spread, you may be able to, you know, create something different. I had a, I had a 16 piece band called black Sunday road show that played Americana music. Yeah. I had, well, I had that house rockers and it had, you know, had four horns, including a tuba player. It had three gospel singers, a banjo player, a pedal steel. And we played, you know, just this big hoot nanny type of music. People really, really liked it. I bet it they did. Dance. Cause it's, cause it's different. It's not different. the same thing they're getting everywhere else. And, and you know, that's, that's something to don't overlook that. Um, if you can deliver something that's different and I don't just mean, well, we're going to play dance songs, but you haven't heard my version, right? You know, <laughs> you haven't seen, the, the, the Mr. Paul Kent, you haven't seen my fastball band, uh, that I, like that's tough. That's a tough, that's, that's not different enough. Like that's, that's really not what I'm saying here. You might be able to make that work, but that's sort of a different vibe. But if, if you can find something where you can, Get people to sit and actually listen to your music. Like we said it last week, and uh, you know we're becoming a broken record here. But and that's, that's as good as it's going to get. <laughs> I love that. I love that when that can happen. It's the entertainment industry. Yeah, man. Yeah. So just find a way to entertain. Don't worry about how other people. Are. I mean, learn from. Take the things that other people are doing that resonate with you and m mash it all together and do your thing. Whatever that is, cover music, original music, tribute music, like f find the thing that makes you happy to go do and go do that. Yeah. But when you're going to go do that, you're going to need to talk to people. You're going to need to talk to your bandmates. You're going to need to talk to booking agents. You're going to need to communicate. And so I want to have, um, I, I guess that the, I'll ask the external communication question first, but we'll, we'll do both here. Uh, I was having a conversation with somebody actually in, in Texas and they were, they were like, and I, and it, I mentioned that gig that, uh, that happened, that last minute gig I did a couple of weeks ago, it just was the duo with me and Maddie that we got the, you know, we got the gig, I don't know, 19 hours before it started or something. Cause he needed a, a fill in and we we're happy to do it. It worked out great. Uh, but he, he messaged me on Facebook and Facebook messenger is something that I don't always have notifications on for it. I happened to that night and obviously it worked out. And I said, yeah, it was, you know, it was good. And he's like, Oh, I, I won't, I won't work with people who, uh, who use Facebook messenger. I was like, well, that seems like an interesting decision to make. <laughs> you know? Uh, so I, like, I wonder, I, I'm curious what avenues everybody uses. And I, I want to ask you, Paul, but I want to ask everybody that's listening. So feedback at giggabpodcast.com. Please, you know, this is the beginning of this conversation, not the end of it. But I'm, Paul, I'm curious, you know, what what avenues do you use? Is it email, text, phone, messenger, you know, Skype? Like what, what how do you, how do people get in touch with you? How do you stay in touch with the people that you're working with uh, at venues? So the, it, those are two different questions. How do I stay in touch? Meaning I've established a relationship and, and yeah. what do I use to establish a relationship? They, they're okay. slightly two different questions. Okay, fair. Yep. So uh, let's start with how do I make a first contact? It, it's generally email. Okay. Sprinkled in <clears throat> with a phone call. And phone calls have become a really weird herring yeah. in the communication arsenal right now. Like it's, it's, it's almost a personal, 
um, uh, in, intrusion sometimes to make a phone call, right? Yeah, unless some, unless you've scheduled it, me. but yes. Yeah. yeah, right? But, you know, and again, this is like knowing your own skill set. If you're someone who can project a non-threatening, you know, I'm calling, you know, oh, oh you know, innocently to just inquire about booking opportunities. You know, I think a phone call will be, will set you different from many, many, many groups. Yep. Most people just want to do email. It's anonymous. They get frustrated when they don't get something back. Like they're owed a, they're owed a return email, but how <laughs> easy is it for the person on the other end of the line to say, I'm going to ignore that. So, so, so the answer to your question, how do I, how do I find a way to establish connection? Always email occasionally based upon a few um, factors may add additionally a phone call. Okay. What well, now no, let me, no one, go ahead. Let, let me ask you just specifically, just to, to make sure we're not uh, making an uh, omission of omission. Uh, do you ever go and I'll list the other methods that are sort of coming to mind. You ever go to a club and talk with them? Do you ever reach out to a, a venue like when you can, you know, you can message venues on Facebook? Do you ever reach out like on Instagram because you can message, you know, brands on Instagram too? Are you doing any of that or is it email or phone only for that initial Fair. contact? So I, yeah. I have done all of those things. So okay. certainly in earlier days and, and, and it's a little bit weird now because I know most of the sure. venues to some degree, most of the, you know, the booking agents. And so there's a little bit of familiarity. So I'm not as often rediscovering new places, but I definitely in my early days, you know, especially when I was that, that entrepreneurial business kid, I would say, Hey, I'll go make a sales call. And and yeah. I would go into a place. And again, in the same way, it, it really depends on your skill set. If you walk in and you're awkward and you're don't present yourself well, you've hurt your case. Yep. If you get on the phone and you kind of stumble over your pitch, you've hurt your case, right? Email works more often because you can stare at it before you hit send. And are you really, you know, is this really what I want to say? Not that everybody self edits, but, but that's, you have an opportunity. Benefit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I have done that. I'm thinking of two bookers in particular. There's, there's one booker that um, he is very specific. I will only, I will only conduct business by email. Okay. Don't call me. Don't call me. Don't use my Facebook messenger. That's for my friends. Right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, we're Facebook connected and, and he's very specific. You get a ding against you for booking considerations. If you violate these rules, some people will hear that and say, Oh, golden opportunity to violate related rule and, and stick out from the rest of the people. You, you know, you it's do like, that at your own risk. That's like the salesperson. I actually had a business partner years and years ago. Nobody here knows them. Uh, who said, uh, Oh yeah, when I see those no solicitation signs, that means we're weak, and uh, and you definitely want to go knock on the door because you'll probably be able to sell them something. Because <laughs> nobody else will. Because nobody else. Yeah, nobody will. else will knock on the door. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but, you're, but it can totally that. backfire. Obviously, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that using those signs yep. uh, in that way, but some salespeople do. Yeah. And the, you know, there's a you know, I have a good relationship with one booking guy. We're on a text message relationship. Yep. He will immediately answer my text messages and it's become, it worked for him. He's never said, don't do it. I can't imagine he wants 500 people blowing up his phone. I don't, you know, I don't but know. You don't know. Always gets out. Yeah, you maybe, don't know. Maybe you do. So, so that, okay. So now we're sort of transitioning from how do I reach out to people to how do I stay in touch with people? And I'm, I, I have one, I have two questions. Number one, are you like my friend in Texas? And I've actually changed the state that they're in because so that if you're trying to figure out which Texas friend you folks have got it wrong already, um, <laughs> like my friend in Texas who has rules about what methods they will use. So do you have any off limits methods for you? And uh, the second question is, do you decide which method you're going to use to stay in touch with someone or do you let them choose that method and then you just adopt whatever they've chosen? Well, I'll ask usually. So like yeah. even on, on, on bookers that I um, haven't gotten a booking with in my emails, if we're doing my email, I will say, is it okay to keep in touch from now and then? Would you prefer email? Is it okay if I send you a text every once in a while, if I have some dates come available? And just you're kind of always, well, you, you know what you're trying to do? You're trying to establish 
that I'm not trying to do something to you. I'm trying to do something for you. I'm, I'm I literally, yeah. I, you know, I want to have a, but I've got business to do. You've got business to do. You know, when we get to a place where these, where our goals align, you know, at least we'll be in touch in the right way. So this is, you know, it, it's a little bit deeper than what Avenue it's really, it's really what Avenue complements the situation. It makes total what sense. Being for, yeah. It's not, Oh, no, that's the answer I was looking how for. Do you, how do you get gigs? Right. It, yeah. you, know, it, you know, for me, I write pretty well and, um, you know, I think I set a, a non confrontational t- tone, uh, in, in any of the avenues that I try to connect with. Yeah. Right. And then I try to, you know, if I get a booking, you know, I, you know, I always thank people for a booking afterwards, no matter how well I know them. Even a guy who's been booking me for years. Hey, thanks for the gig. You know, really appreciate it. A lot of fun. Your staff is great. Please you and know, thank you, you cost you. nothing. nothing. They cost nothing. Unless you have it somehow wrapped up in your ego that you can't say please or thank you. And it's a sign of weakness. In which case, I recommend you work on that because it's not going to help but this you. This is the task of being a, That's a, it. a person who's trying to book. Yes. This is the business. This is the responsibility you're taking on. It's not look at my fastball. It's like, no. hey, you know, hopefully we hopefully we just did something that worked for both of us. Hope the hope the bar did great that night. You know, hey, you know, we did we did pretty good on on uh, at the door today. Hope you guys did as well as possible. Hey, it was a little it was a little lighter tonight. I think I know why. You know, we're gonna adjust. Like it's a conversation. That's yes. relationship stuff, and that's the essence of it. So the 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 tack that you take email, phone call, drop in, you know, Instagram. I, I am going to go on a little side ramp about Facebook soon, but, but, um, but um, it's really what facilitates a relationship. It's what does he want? What do you want? How good are you at it? You know, yeah. did you? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's a long answer. We should talk about Facebook again because it comes well, in and out, right? I have, I have a, I, I, well, I have a very specific Facebook issue that has, been made obvious again recently, but I think it's always been sort of an issue, uh, which is the second is sort of what led to me adding the second half of this. So I'm glad we didn't wind up having this conversation last week. And that is how do you communicate internally in your band? Right. We've talked about Slack here and I want to talk a little bit more about it because I think you and I use it uh, with at least some of our projects uh, with Bitter Pill. We've uh, basically since it started, uh, certainly yeah, I mean, I think all the way back to the the first Bitter Pill show we did, we just created a private Facebook group, and that's what we use to communicate with each other. And it's fine for announcements uh, because you can you can tell Facebook to uh, you know alert me to anything that happens in this group, but all it's going to alert you to is the first time a post is made. And then if you go to the group, you don't necessarily get things in chronological order, right? It shows you the things that it thinks you'll want to see and that you'll react to and that you'll stay on the platform. Like that's just part just and parcel. Freaking off. It, right. But, that, but that's how their like that's how their business works is they want to keep you on the platform. So they're choosing what they're showing you, which when you're just doom scrolling, I guess, is, is it the, entirely the point for better and for worse, mostly the latter. Mm-hmm. But, you know, whatever. But for conducting business. You sometimes don't want to be shown what the algorithm wants to see, wants you to see. You want to go find the thing. Like I saw a notification yesterday about a thing. I couldn't engage then. I want to engage now. Where the F is it? And I I had not one, not two, but three instances last week where I saw things. We're starting to use our electronic medium as a collaboration platform, a lot like Fling is doing where we're sending song snippets around and all that. But it's all happening inside this Facebook group because that's the only place that 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 band has. And immediate as soon as this started happening, and it's all just started happening in the last week, week and a half, I think. Although maybe it's been happening all the way through, and I've just never even seen it in the first place. But I've seen the notifications of them come in, and then I like on Sunday I was like, all right, cool, I've got some time. I want to dig in. I've got some fling stuff to do. I've got some bitter pill stuff to do. I want to absorb all this content and that people are creating and and respond to it and collaborate. Right, like that's the whole point. Uh, both of those bands are massively collaborative bands. It's all great. And I couldn't find it. Like I hunted. I searched for like it, like it just wasn't there. Facebook wasn't going to show it to me. And I don't think anybody deleted it. But who knows? Yeah. I you know I don't know. And so I've, I've asked my bandmates in Bitter Pill, 
if we can do a two week experiment and just like not use Facebook for two weeks, try Slack for two weeks and see if we can kind of get over that, that there's some change resistance as, as there always is, right? Like if something works, why, why, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Well, in this case, it's, you know, it's definitely broke. So, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm eager to see how that experiment works, but at the same time, I'm curious what methods does, does everyone else use? Um, you know, like I, like I said, as I started this little diatribe here in, uh, in Fling, we've been using Slack for about the last year and with everybody on board with it, it's fantastic. And the really nice part is, you know, at, at, at different times, any one of us might need to be sort of not engaged for three or four days, right? You know, we've got stuff going on in our lives, whatever it is, but Slack makes it super easy to just kind of swoop in and catch up on everything all at once because it's going to show you yeah. what threads have new notifications with this. And well, one, one part of. I, yeah, well, one part I really like about Slack is you can, I can set a reminder. So if I see something and I'm like, oh, I want to come back to this, I can tell Slack, remind me about this tomorrow, in two hours, next week, you know, whatever. And yeah. it's all right there and it's all in chronological order and I can search yeah. and find things. I mean, it's, it's a tool built for collaboration. Facebook is a tool built to earn Facebook money. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, well, sort of. So, so let me give you a quick download on, on our Slack jo yeah. journey. So, yeah. we've been using Slack for quite a while. Took a little while to get everybody on. Mm -hmm. Slack is, was not great about communicating how long the trial period was versus the not trial period. Sure. And it went for a long time, and all of a sudden, anything over the ninety days that's been a post is now gone. Yeah. But I can buy, I can I can now pay and get it all back, but it's gone. Sure. Right? Yep. Um, yeah, it used to be, they changed guys, it because it used to be a maximum of 10,000 messages and now it's just unlimited number of messages. 90 days is what the trial days. period lets you see, which we're finding in fling is not an free, issue What the free period, what the free period is. It's not a trial period. No, sorry. With the free. Yes. The free plan of Slack gives yeah. now gives you 90 a, days. a 90 day window and you can see everything. And we're finding that to be totally fine in, in fling. It's, it's been great. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Good things about Slack, it's integrations. Uh, it yeah. integrates with like our Google Calendar. That's kind of cool because I post something to the Google Calendar, it gets to an, an announcement that's posted into, into a, a Slack group. That's kind of cool. The most frustrating thing about Slack is some guys, when they've gone through an, an OS upgrade, either on the computer or more likely on their phone, their um, notifications get messed up. And then they're not real techy people and they just assume Slack doesn't work and they just start to kind of not pay attention to it. Yeah. And so, you know, whether they know how to recheck their notifications or whatever. So it's not bulletproof. And no, it's not that that's the one part of Slack that's that you just kind of have to, I'm, I think, you know, I'm actively in like six different Slack groups with the various businesses I have and the various projects I have. And I, you know, I have to, as I add myself to each one, I have to go in and, and set my notifications very specifically so that I'm getting the things I want. And it's, it's not difficult it, except finding the path is difficult. Sure. That's yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and it, like you said, it's tough when people aren't techie. Thankfully the people actually in both bands that I'm in and both bitter pill and, yeah. and, and, um, and fling everybody's nerdy enough to, to, you know, understand technology. It's that, that part's thankfully not an issue, but you have to know to do it regardless of how techie you are. You've got to know that you've got to go and look at this and, and like spend 10 minutes and pay attention while you're doing it. Not with, you know, six other things going on, like really focus and get those notifications dialed in and then you're good to go. Yeah. That's a, that's a fair, yeah, so the, you know, fair like all technical things, there's, there's some tweaking and some maintenance and all, all those yeah. things that have to go on. That, that, and you know, for people who are not technical, that can get in the way of the of your kind of flow. Yeah. Facebook, though, man, we, we really do need to rant about this. I mean, they just. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's here's the thing. I have a ticketed show right now that's just going to sell out, and really, I did emails to my base and and a bunch of Facebook posts, and it's going to sell out. So my 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 we have a good base on Facebook. It works. I I am tired of a picture framing itself right in one instance of Facebook and being, you know, off on the, on another instance of, of Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing on Facebook is absolutely horrible right now are on ticket pirators 
for ticketed shows, you'll I get regularly several people. Hey, I have extra tickets for sale. Message me, you know, yep. and they're 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 counterfeiters. That's a real thing on Facebook. No, we've thing we've on, had it with better pill platform. shows. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that's a problem. The very concept that you have to play this elusive game to talk to the people who have opted in to be connected to you, whether you have to pay for it or you know whatever it is. The changing interface on a daily basis, the changing rules of who you can invite and can't invite to stuff. You are just a lab rat when you are a Facebook user. I <laughs> it's, mean, no, it's it, true. It's, it's awful. It is absolutely awful. I mean, yeah. in, the net net of what it has done for society is really up in the air right now. I I will be the first to say I'm about to sell out a show that largely has been you know organically spread through Facebook, and I'm keenly aware of that. But it feels awful. It feel you know. I guess if you can get it to a place where it's a tool, you use it for what it is, yep. but don't be, you know, the more things you can do to control your own destiny, you know, to have, you know, a better way to get in touch of your, with, with your constituents or additional ways or more ways that you can control. Again, I do an email or two, you know, for big events. I create a Facebook event. I post it on the house rocker page. If enough people organically, engage with it, then that means X amount more will organically engage with it. And that whole type of thing, we've gotten to a place where it's pretty good. And, you know, to the scale where it's, it's pays some dividends, but God, so much about it is so constantly awful. Like, is it just the interface that it presents the, you know, the, the, the discrepancy that it has from day one to day two, you know, I, I, I create an event and I, I center a picture for the event. And then when it posts it in a timeline, it's off center, you know, from what you cropped for it. It's just, uh, all right. I got to stop man. you here. Is your ax fully ground? I hope it is. No, uh, I could go on forever. I, I mean, know, just, but I, I want to, I want to get back to this conversation because I'm, I'm really curious what methods people are using to keep their bands on the same page. Right. So, you know, yeah. is it, we've talked about Slack, we've talked about Facebook, uh, we'll talk more about Facebook. I'm certain. I believe one of us here might have even more to say than the other. Uh, and that's saying something because I came in ready to rant about Facebook and 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 you definitely <laughs> you definitely. Well, it's fine. I mean, it's it's it's, it's actually kind of funny. Uh, but I'm you know, I was thinking as I as I was prepping this segment, I was thinking about other methods. And obviously there's like group text, which we sort of have one for each of the bands. We've all but shied away from that now because Slack tends to be better and it's easier to compartmentalize things and all of that. Uh, but occasionally, you know, especially getting to a gig like day of the gig, that group text can be super helpful because it's really easy to find and, you know, all that stuff. So it's it's good for that kind of thing. I use Discord with a couple of my my sort of business related communities with our our people. And and you and I are using it right now, in fact, to record this show. And one thing that Discord, I find, is really good at, you know, you can create threads in Slack where you say, you know, you start a message and then you want to have a bunch of replies just sort of in a thread off of that so they're easy to find. But you can't name those. You can't, like, save those threads anywhere. With Discord, you can. You can name the threads and they're really easy to see. So if you have, like, a song that you're talking about. You could just have a, you know, a songs channel. And then within that, you'd see the threads for each of the song names and that I could see that being very helpful, but I, I've never used it in a band setting. So I'm curious if any of you are, and I'm just curious what else you're using. There's, there's a service with, um, well, it was actually, I think written by one of you, a listener here to gig gab called where's the gig. And we've been using that with fling and it is spectacular. It lets everybody put their calendars in and put, you know, blackout dates and all of that stuff. So it's super easy for anyone to look, anybody in the band to look in and see who's available when you can. They have a set list creation tool if you want to use that. Uh, but when you, you know, so you can put all your songs in and you can even put in the length of the tune and other like bits of metadata that you can use to just arrange a set list. And then, boom, everybody's got access to it. It's got details for the gig. It syncs with your calendar. It, it like it's a really well done service. I it's you know like I said it's it's definitely um, one that we learned about from one of you and and it's been paying off for Fling. It's been great. In fact, I think we cool. they, they give you like a six month trial and then and then we started paying for it. But but I mean it's it, he's probably not charging enough because um, I I can't even remember what we paid. I mean it's it's some de minimis amount of money. It's like if you're using it. It's totally worth it. 
So, um, so maybe it is perfectly priced, but, um, but I'm curious feedback at giggabpodcast.com. What, what are you using to communicate with it, with your, your bands and, and also bookers and, and share your experiences with it too. Cause we'd really like to know, um, obviously, you know, we've got some of our bands are on Slack change is difficult. So it's gotta be so much better in order to sort of move everything, but you know, better is better. So I'm, 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 I'm open. Yeah. I'm, I'm just curious what, uh, what everybody's using. So did you ever try out that? Where's the gig thing, Paul? I haven't. I remember when we talked about it. Yeah. It's pretty cool though. It's, sure it is cool. It. It's, it's like I said, for fling, it's been fantastic. Um, uh, because it, it just takes all the, it's the, you know, the three days before the gig, all the questions that start popping up are already answered. They like all of that has just gone away. You pay by the user. You pay by the band. You pay by the band. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, you can, I mean, depending on how a given user is using it, you, there are scenarios I think where you can pay by the user, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to see what the prices are and I, I'm, I'm not finding it on there. Let's see if I look at where's the gig pricing. Does that get us anywhere? Where's the gig? Where's the gig? Nah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm finding ginseng prices for in 2022. So I'd like ginseng too, but that's a different thing and it's not really relevant to this conversation. So I'm going to let that go. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's what I got. You got anything else? Do you need to rant more about Facebook? Or can we save that for the next time? Uh, no, we I think we do need to do a full hour on ranting on Facebook. <laughs> That's fine. Therapeutic. Unfortunately, we can't do it next week, nor can we do it the week after. We have some back-to-back -back travel stuff. So I think the next time that we will see each other and talk to all of you is uh, November 1st. So I wanted to warn everybody. it's The show's not going away. We just have some scheduling stuff. So yeah. 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 We'll be back. We're always back. We're always back. Is, so is much, this so much more to talk about? Is this the wrong time to say so? In the interim, come and in, and chat with us in our Facebook group. I think I think that sounds a little tone deaf to say that, so I won't say that. Yeah, yeah. don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> uh, but you could come chat with us in our Facebook group. Maybe we should set up a, a you know like a gig gab Discord or something. Slack. A gig gab Slack. A gig gab Slack for uh, for everybody. Yeah, yeah. That would give us all an opportunity to, what's it? Always be performing. That's the one.